Hey everyone, Austin here. Before we start this episode, I just want to say that this is a very important subject that we're going to be talking about in this episode. I think it's very important to demystify subjects like zoosadism and child abuse in order to truly combat it because, as you will hear later in this episode, a lot of people's initial reaction is to avoid the topic because it makes people uncomfortable. And make you uncomfortable is what this episode will do. We are going to talk about a lot of pretty graphic descriptions of abuse, sexual abuse, mutilation, primarily relating to monkeys, but just know that this is going to be a rough one. So, if you choose to listen, take care of yourself. Welcome everyone to episode 40 of Gorilla Radio Show, and this is a very special episode in the middle of our series we're doing on the Congo, because as many of you have seen in our Discord, you've been sharing it with me online in all sorts of ways, uh, there's a recent article uh, from the BBC called Hunting the Monkey Torturers, and it's got a lot of bombshells about the monkey hate group that we were, we did a pretty quick bonus episode about uh, a couple months ago, but we never really went as far in depth as this kid. So I'm going to go ahead and have everyone introduce themselves and as well as our guest who we have on. Um, so I'm, I'm Chandran, you all know me. Well, I guess, hey, I'm Greg. I don't. <laughs> you guys know who I am. And joining yeah. us today is Yardfish, a, a yeah. kind of a small star from this new BBC article. Can you please tell everyone yeah. what you do, Yardfish? Okay, so you can also call me Dave if you don't want to call me Yardfish, because that's okay. kind of a yeah. weird name. <laughs> that's true. I, I, that's true. I probably, should, probably should have discussed um, names and stuff a second ago. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. But Dave is great. So, okay. Yeah, so I... I've been working for the last two and a half years on investigating zoo sadistic communities that exist on the internet. And um, that isn't simply, it's not simply limited to just monkeys, uh, dogs, cats, rats, rodents, all sorts of stuff that people just do really, really strange things to. Yes. So yeah, yeah um, but the thing that we kind of like been working the most on over the last two years is specifically the monkey hate stuff, which started on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Though I should specify, I don't ever call them monkey haters. I always refer to them as monkey molesters mm-hmm. for a reason, because that's what they are. Yeah, jeez. Well, um, <clears throat> I guess uh, you mentioned this started on YouTube. How did you discover the monkey torturers, this this community? How did uh, I think Linda from the article described it as being fed to her by the YouTube algorithm. Is that the same story with you? Uh, yeah, well, Lucy, not Linda. Um, oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, well, actually, like, all of this stuff was actually in the documentary that was made. They shot a ridiculous amount of content, but they had to consolidate all of it down to 57 minutes. So, but mm-hmm. essentially, we found it due to the YouTube algorithm. Uh, we, if you watch animal videos, you're eventually going to find a video of an animal in distress. And this time, it was a baby monkey that had fallen into a well. Quote, unquote, fallen into a well. But it's obviously contrived and faked because the guy is filming it for like five minutes, just watching it flail around before he reaches in. And he's like, oh, how are you falling there? And he picks it up and he pretends to like take care of it and whatever. But, you know, it was obviously fake. And mm-hmm. from that video, obviously, the recommendations popped up and there were more videos of monkeys falling into wells, which was a trend at that time. Like, there was this mm-hmm. one video where they dressed these baby monkeys up in like, you know, like really hideous summer dresses and then tossed them into a well. And then they tied another monkey with a rope, right? And started lowering it down into the well, like Mission Impossible style, to get the other one out of there. Like wow. these really weird, contrived situations that was being done for drama. And, um... yeah. It kept getting worse. Like the further on you went, you would start seeing the um, videos of baby monkeys that were trapped in situations that they could never feasibly end up on their own, right? Like stuck between yeah. two tables. And that led to the dog videos where baby monkeys were being attacked by dogs and filmed. Like, um, I don't know if you guys ever saw any of the videos that I ever uploaded onto YouTube, uh, but it basically goes over that entire like rabbit hole in detail. Ah, uh, yeah. So yeah, for the for the record, the YouTube channel is Yardfish, correct? Yeah, yeah. 
yeah so <laughs> but um there's i think about you put up with like two maybe three hours of documentary about various kinds of chan you kind of i think the first episode it documents a lot of the different kinds of channels that are uploading these kinds of videos uh, and yeah. you used a very concerning word that you said there's there like trends going around like putting yeah. baby monkeys into wells how much of the videos you were finding were following trends or were like showing some kind of connection to this larger monkey torture community okay so the first thing to clarify there is that the stuff that existed on youtube right with the um the monkey channels the monkey pet channels to be specific they are run by cambodians mm -hmm. and the start the off-site stuff like the telegram stuff where they're actual explicit torture snuff sexual abuse that's run by indonesians like there is no overlap for some very very strange reason the cambodians mm -hmm. refuse to film snuff videos at least until recently one of them has changed their mind um yeah and this is like a very small group of uh like distributors for these for like uh videographers right yeah like, there's less than 10 of them okay huh yeah and out of those 10 only five of them were very active and we've okay i shouldn't say that um yeah out of five of them were really heavily active mm -hmm. Uh, but with regards to trends, right? So the Cambodian channels are actually owned by the same small handful of people. Uh, the guy, yeah, you guys are aware of like the Angkor Wat videos, the ones that are filmed at the um, the temple Angkor Wat in Cambodia. Yes, I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. So those guys that are often filming there, they actually run the pet channels as well. See, most of this started once the pandemic hit. They couldn't film outside, so they would take the baby monkeys home with them. And they start filming there and they recognize that videos featuring infant monkeys got way more engagement than usual so specifically stuff where the baby monkey was in distress so obviously when they went home they started you know really churning out content featuring baby monkeys in distress and uh that's kind of the genesis of where this community came from mm -hmm. so with regards to the trends because these guys all know each other once they were realized that something you know got a lot of views they would all start doing it so when i got into it it was wells then it switched to dogs then it switched to uh fake vet visits which is still pretty common okay mm. and then so how does so most of the torture and most of like the, the molestation is happening in indonesia what do you think was like the drive for these indonesian content creators like who reached out to who at least in your best guess to okay. start that content. well this is not even a guess we know this um so like do you can find treads going as far back as like 4chan and stuff where people found like the weird monkey fetish community mm -hmm. and they were all speculating what was going on this is way back in 2017 uh but nobody had ever really exposed anything because there was nothing to expose at that point these guys they met naturally on youtube and they started like watching his content on youtube but once the pandemic hit and everybody was locked up inside, people started going off a little bit more than usual. And they started trying to get into contact with the YouTubers for more and more extreme content. Okay. And the Cambodians, they didn't bite. They, for whatever reason, I still don't know. Uh, but eventually they found some Indonesian guys. Uh, one of them ran a channel called, ironically, Baby Incidentally, Baby Monkey Channel. And he started using YouTube's premium subscription service to offer torture videos like uploaded directly onto youtube so if you pay you could um you'd get access to his premium content that was like stuff where baby monkeys were being strangled or like held underwater for a very long time yeah yeah and youtube didn't and, take uh, these down no that channel is still existing actually okay and do oh, you, actually, uh, let me just let me just double check yeah. that yeah i mean this is like a lot like when we made our episode on this it was something that like we heard we kept getting people like messages about people did you hear about the monkey haters do you hear about like the monkey hate community and we found the subreddit called like monkey hate gate and it was we talked about this briefly before the recording for me it was like one of those things where it's like i can't even think about this right now how deep do i want to look into this and so it was it's i ended up not knowing the full extent of it until like we actually started doing that episode and I, I didn't know what to do from there because I was like shocked. I was like, oh my god, like we were we were doing a lot of speculating 
yeah. which was about all we could do, I suppose. And some of our speculation ended up being sort of right. Um, but that was also mostly because of a lot of work that other people had already been doing, such as like, there's a lot of people connecting the dots between uh, these telegram groups, like uh, the Apes Cage, to like, say, uh, child abuse telegram groups or any other sort of unmoderated uh, encrypted messaging platform. Yeah. And yeah, just a whole lot of a lot of overlap. And it does seem to be like the demand seems to be coming from like mostly Americans and British people, if I'm is that correct? Uh, so, yeah, the primary demographic is Americans, people from the U.S. by a significant mm -hmm. majority. However, over the last yeah. couple of months, there's been an influx of people from Latin American countries, um, mm -hmm. a number of them. Yeah. But for the most part, it's still U.S. They were the ones that were funding the content. Uh, I should also point out, though, that the amount of people that are actually funding this content is relatively small. Um, if you guys saw the documentary, so you guys saw Stacy, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Stacy, this community would not exist without Stacy. If you ever saw a video of a baby monkey being tortured, um, especially if it was being sodomized and then it was killed, uh, it was Stacy's doing. She was responsible for around more than 50% of the content that was produced. Like at the height of her career, quote unquote career, she and Asep, who Indonesian view, they were killing one baby monkey a week. Oh my god, Jeez. okay. Yeah, this went on for a period of months. That's why I believe, yeah. we we got into this to find Stacy. Uh, that was hmm. our whole goal. And um, yeah, she is... I, I don't think I can even tell you the kind of stuff that she did. Because it's... it's you, you're definitely going to get demonetized, most likely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, technically, can, most of our if money you, comes if you from would like independent to tell Patreon us you can, and we can absolutely cut it if we think it would be too graphic. Or we can put yeah. a little warning before mm -hmm. it. Yeah, no, we, yeah, we are totally yeah. independently, like, uh, publicly funded. So we don't have okay. any, any like, We don't rely on YouTube no. money, usually, yeah. <laughs> okay, so, well, most of the people in this community are sexual sadists, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you probably heard the psychology mm -hmm. mention that. Psychologists yeah, I think that. I think that's something that doesn't show up in the BBC's coverage very much. But yeah, you talk a lot more in your videos. Yeah. The the they couldn't really mention it, so they had to use like the psychologist and the homeland security guy to get the point across. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they are sexual sadists. They're motivated primarily by their desire to see something that's very helpless, uh, something that's perceived as innocent, be degraded, humiliated, uh, broken down, and. Um, it's pretty bad with most where most of them are concerned, but Stacy took it to an entirely new level. She was obsessed with the idea of sodomizing infant monkeys, uh, to the point of just hilarity. Like her YouTube channel, I included like a clip of it in one of my videos, I can't remember which one, was entirely like baby monkey genitals. Like that was just a lot of uploads and clips spliced in specifically with that. And um the people in this community would very frequently request videos of baby monkeys being sodomized. It was one of the most popular things to be requested, but the viewers thought it was disgusting. So the guys filming themselves were like, no, that's too much. We're not going to do that. And Stacy's viewer was the exception. And she actually bragged about it, talking about how, what she had to do to get this guy to actually, you know, do this kind of stuff, tell, telling everybody who would listen, this was going to be unlike anything they'd ever seen before. And then she started producing those types of videos and she kept doing Jeez. it all the way up until her guy was caught like the last video that they ever made together this guy heats up like a six inch nail and uses it to sodomize a, a newborn monkey until it goes into shock and dies good lord yeah yeah Holy that's fucking really shit. heavy stuff yeah, we'll we'll put, yeah, a, little we'll put a little warning in before that. that. <laughs> I'm, yeah, but, um, I had I had a follow up question about something you said before, where you said that there's new demand coming from Latin America. Yeah. Do you does that seem like it's something that's being like it's a like a closed loop, like it's like creators are in Latin America taking New World monkeys, uh, baby monkeys there, and and doing this to them, or are they or is this still being outsourced to Indonesia? Okay, so the majority of the content is still from Indonesia, but we've shut down most of the videos. 
there was one guy from Malaysia who we also managed to that's an ongoing case we still we managed to stop him at the very least from creating new videos but he so he was raided the police found his stuff yeah it went the police were disgusted by it by the way just horrified uh however once forensics were finished with his stuff the da requested that the case be dropped personally and that is just incredibly baffling to everybody involved like it is a crime in indonesia to do what he did and uh we're still working on him. But yeah, there are no producers from Latin America as of right now. There is one producer from West Africa. That's it. Huh. Yeah, I will say, like, one of the, like, part of this is, like, obviously there's a monetary incentive. I'm assuming the US dollar goes a lot further in Indonesia it than does. it does here. Yeah. And, you know, they, generally speaking, uh, the people involved in this at least when they pool their money together have a lot of money to give and so that's like a big incentive but even still it seems like something that you couldn't pay most people any amount of money to do and so it does it does seem like maybe a good like most of the the small few people who are filming this content are probably have something going on already that would make them inclined to be willing to do this kind of stuff or like what's your take on it i guess um you're talking specifically about the viewers who filmed the stuff right not the people yeah themselves. like do you think like just the monetary amount was so persuasive or for the vo's to film this stuff or do you think it was, they just had some because i know like one of the guys was already a monkey pet trafficker which yeah would already expose him to like so yeah expose him to some cruelty. that guy was asap that was stacy's vo and he was the guy who filmed along with stacy like 50 percent of the snuff videos uh probably uh -huh. more uh there's been in the like over the course of the last two years there's been more than a thousand videos produced like from the entire Jesus. community so uh he was motivated primarily by monetary reasons and so there are still parts of this that i can't talk about like he mm -hmm. did not work alone um but yeah uh it's possible that what well, he only got a fraction of the cut from the actual money that actually got sent over um as for the other guys though like okay bro is just like he was a pathetic little shit that was just like he was he was the most pitiful of the entire viewer group uh you saw him is crying. he the one that said he felt bad for Minnie after doing that stuff yeah don't feel the... sorry for him though he raped Minnie with a toothbrush so yeah uh, um i i won't yeah, feel no. sorry for him no, absolutely not. Yeah, what was surprising is that he has a wife and kid, and apparently his wife was in on that as well. So there is Jeez. part of that. Um, that's kind of an uncommon trend with these videos in Indonesia. Their family is usually aware of what they're doing. Like, there's a guy that we're looking at right now, and he masquerades as an animal activist um, in Indonesia. Mm. You know, and when he's making videos, you can hear his siblings, like, walking around and talking to him while he's like dismembering a baby monkey while it's still alive so Jeez. animal welfare in indonesia is pretty like it's pretty terrible it's one of the worst countries in the world when it comes to that kind of stuff and these people were never going to get caught had the bbc not used their influence to actually get the police to do something that's that's a fact like it was not going to happen otherwise like mm -hmm. asap despite the kind of stuff that asap did the only reason he got caught is because he was involved in smuggling exotic animals, endangered animals. That's where the majority of his sentence came from. Yeah, I did see that. Yeah. Mm. Um, but Jeez. most of them did it for money, I would say. But there was one guy, the Malaysian guy, he did it for fun. Like he actually started as part of this community and he would capture mm. he would capture monkeys on his own, but he could only capture juveniles and adults because it's really hard to capture a baby monkey without assistance. And um, yeah. he would, after work, he would go check his trap and then he would like beat these monkeys to death. And uh, he started filming it and uploading it to these telegram groups. But nobody cared because it wasn't like baby monkeys, which is the only thing that they were interested in. And mm -hmm. once the other viewers were out of the way, he started switching to baby monkeys. Like he would have to buy... Sorry, that okay. was a lizard in my room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man>. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, so he would like he would buy these videos. He would import the monkeys from Indonesia, essentially send them over, and uh, he would they would crowdfund these videos, and then he would start torturing them. He was like, 
he was completely unhinged. He did this entirely for himself, first and foremost, and for money, secondly. So he's an exception to the rule, primarily, I would say. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I was going to say, like, the one uh, you just mentioned, he only got the eight-month sentence because he wasn't trafficking animals, I believe. Yeah. Uh, and he lived near a forest that had, like, a native population of these uh, macaques. I, I don't remember what species Long-tail. it is. Long-tail. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. So do you think it has something to do with... Uh, one speculation I made that, like, one of my first assumptions when I heard about this was, like, maybe this is people where, you know, they're farmers and they view monkeys as pest animals already. Because in a couple of countries, monkeys will raid farms for crops and they're considered a pest for that reason. And I, like, thought maybe that was the case at first until I saw that most of the demand was coming from America. Yeah. And, like, I, I just... I didn't know how to explain it, but, like, hearing all this about, like, the nature of the sexual abuse, specifically towards infant monkeys, makes it make a bit more sense, I think. Because it does seem to be, like, a psychologically entwined with child sexual abuse. Yeah. I mean, like the guy, the Agent Walpole said in that documentary, everything about this community maps, like, one-to-one onto what you'd call the hardcore communities. They differ from regular pedophiles. Um... Mm -hmm. So there are multiple classifications of like sexual offenders when it comes to child predators, right? And mm-hmm. most people kind of like lump them all in together, but there is a noticeable difference. Like um, there are the people who are very socially incompetent. They can't connect with people of their age. So they pursue people that are much younger than they are because it allows them to be the dominant force in the relationship, right? Uh, like those mm-hmm. streamers that often get caught grooming their fans and stuff like that. They fall into that yeah. category. And then there are the people who are desensitized by pornography they watch a lot of pornography and they get they want to get more and more extreme so they eventually end up in like child pornography pornography and stuff like that uh they do it because they're bored i guess and they need the titillation from something that's very taboo but at the very bottom of the list there's the sadistic sexual offender and that's where these guys kind of fall into they are people that are aroused primarily by humiliation by degradation they want to see things that are helpless things that can't defend themselves uh, be psychologically broken and like torn down so a lot of the torture is designed to psychologically break the animals so they would do things like they would uh, they stroke the animals when they start before they start torturing like almost like foreplay uh they want to get the animal acclimated start trusting them a little bit and then they start abusing them they have like this fetish for that violation of trust uh their holy grail video, this was going for like $800 when it was um, first dropped. Torture a baby monkey in front of its mother. That is their, probably their most common fetish. They want to see an infant monkey tortured in front of its mother. And then they want to have the baby killed in front of the mother or vice versa. And uh, yeah, that video went for $800 and it was a fake. Like it wasn't even real. It was just an older macaque with a younger macaque. You described these three types of personalities. And I, you had almost certainly a lot more experience with these kinds of predators now that you've been involved with in such a huge investigation. So yeah. I, one of the things that really stood out to us when we were first reading these interviews with people like the Torture King and Mr. Ape was this kind of, this facade of like sorrow and regret and this like, I don't know how I lost control, I you know, was in a bad place and I slipped into this and it just, do you, do you think there's any cr- real credence to the kind of cover that they are giving for themselves or the kind of explanation they're giving, or do you believe it's a cover for maybe much more deeply disturbed psychological problems? Well, first things first, that's not unique to them specifically. Mm-hmm. It's uh, pretty much all types of zoo sadists fall into that category, like the guys who abuse dogs and cats. They also, and when I say abuse, I don't mean like they just hit their cat. I mean like the really extreme mm-hmm. violence. Like there are guys who... Mm-hmm. Rape, okay, I just, I, Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. And it's not just that. It's like extremely aberrant. Like a lot of these people, they're like, they oscillate between these really high highs where they're, you know, really getting a lot of pleasure from watching these videos. And then they have their, their moment of clarity post-explosion uh, mm-hmm. where they kind of just... They feel guilty. They feel really bad about it. They feel sick with themselves. And some of them actually do try to stop. Some of them turn informant. And some of them 
self-terminate in some cases. There was a guy who was, he wasn't involved in the monkey stuff, but he was involved in like other forms of zoo sadism mm -hmm. who, um, he killed himself once he realized that he had been uncovered. Uh, mm -hmm. but the thing is, it's really hard for them to stop. Like they, yeah. we would see these guys often like begging to be let back into new telegram groups on Facebook, on YouTube, trying to get into contact with people who are like, you know, higher up in the community, just acting like addicts. And that's probably the most consistent like trend that we've noticed amongst consumers of this content. They have addictive personalities. In fact, a lot of them were addicted to either meth, heroin, or opiates. It like, it comes up so much that it's impossible to ignore. Uh, yeah. another thing is like a lot of them also appear to like suffer from obsessive compulsive disorder, like those two things combined mm -hmm. as for whether or not they actually feel guilty. I think yes, a part of the, some of them do, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but they can't yeah. stop themselves. So yeah, that actually, that brings me to like sort of two observations we made during our initial episode that we had where we sort of pointed out that this is sort of like porn addiction in a way, it feels like. Yeah, I watched, I watched your episode, by the way. I, I, I oh, watched it okay. yesterday. Oh, God, you know how yeah. unhinged we are. Okay. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> yeah. thought it was, it was, I thought it was cool. I mean, if I told you guys were like batshit crazy or something, I wasn't coming on here. I was going to go, yeah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, but yeah, so, yeah, we definitely noticed that, like, maybe before we knew the full extent of it, that there is, like, a sort of connection between, like, porn addiction and like that need to like constantly ramp up the psychological like shock factor yeah that is uh sort of fortified by an algorithmic content yeah, yeah because the rate at which these people escalated was insane because most of these yeah. people right that were in these groups they were watching videos of baby monkeys getting teased with bottles they were watching videos of like a baby monkey getting slapped maybe now and then or held down underwater and yeah. then from that they went to baby monkeys getting nailed to trees and having needles stuck into their genitals so it was like it was a huge jump and yeah but the, the thing about it that we also learned is most a lot of these people that are into this kind of stuff they like to constantly talk about the fact that they're normal people who you know they just have a thing for macaques and that is complete bullshit mm -hmm. uh, from what we yeah. found a lot of these people were involved in very questionable shit before they even got involved with the macaques. A lot of them were like gore fishing out of us, for example. In some cases, they would pay for premium memberships to gore sites. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of them, you can find like their, their profiles and their criminal records online. Drug possession, uh, prostitution, uh, assault, throwing their shit at people. Yeah, one of them literally Jeez. has that in his criminal. That's what I was going to... That's, <laughs> that's actually what I wanted to ask you where... When you, when, I don't know how many of these people you actually have, like, you could see their priors, but were any of them convicted sex offenders, or were, like, was it an abnormally large amount of them convicted sex offenders before this? Um, most of the time their convictions were for drugs. Okay. Mm -hmm. Editor's note, after the interview, Dave actually did double check. Turns out most of them did have sexual offenses. Uh, but the other thing is, like, the people who were most, I guess to say, the people who were demanding the sexual stuff the most were often women, which is interesting. Uh, yeah. yeah, we did note that that a lot of the profile pictures seem to be like women, or at least I, I think the subreddit pointed out that a lot of the people involved were women. Oh yeah, those aren't That's Sokol little... Buner accounts, by the way. Those are actually them. Uh, yeah, that doesn't. <laughs> that seems brand. like it's not smart. Maybe. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's one thing that was cut out of the documentary that I thought kind of sucked. The thing that eclipses these people's sadism the most is their stupidity. Yeah. They are yeah. the dumbest group of criminals on planet Earth. Nothing else comes close. Yeah. Like, because, like, from their public accounts with their faces attached, that seems kind of, like, not insane. smart. Yeah. yeah, it's not just that, but they, they tie their financial accounts to the purchase of, like, Animal Crush videos and... Yeah, not even, like, cryptocurrency or anything? Some or? of them did try to use crypto, but a lot of them can't figure out how to make it work so they just use cash app or what's <laughs> Fair or like paypal instead and um yeah crypto can still be tracked you know so yeah. true <laughs> that's that's how a bunch of them got caught anyway so it's not really uh, all that helpful interesting Maybe. yeah like i mean yeah. right before this i decided to check some of their groups before i came online to see what they were saying 
these dipshits, right? Despite <laughs> the fact that they basically just were told that they are being hunted by the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, and mm. not just just not just that, the guys that are hunting them, the guys that specialize in tracking child predators, that's their yeah. job. That's what they do. A normal yeah. human being would understand the implications of that, right? And just like piss off and go somewhere else. These dumb shits went back to the exact same groups that they were just told had been compromised and continued on as usual you know they were like ho oh, oh, the karens think that uh, the fbi and scotland yard and interpol and uh, the homeland security are watching us but tee hee hee that's never gonna happen you know and until it happens i, hate, I just have to i hate to make this my like, head a, hurts. like a political thing but i gotta ask yeah is there a big maga contingent in this is it like a noticeable thing is there not there, it's okay there if was, there's not i'm just there, so interested there was the nazi guy it, it yeah, seems like, like torture king um like is this well, a, are they like right they're very right wing seem... leaning i mean so that was i was actually kind of under the impression that that might have been the case i'm not american by the way i don't yeah, give a shit yeah. about you guys politics yeah. <laughs> but um I was under that impression as well because it seemed like that at first, but it's more of an issue like those types of people, they tell you what they are. That's true. They have an American flag everywhere. <laughs> so they stick out the most, but it's actually politically like it's it's not really an issue. Like there are a lot of people who are who are like actually like gay rights activists and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So it's a pretty surprising mix because you have a group where you have a guy who's like extremely like, you know, my rifle, my life, you ain't yeah. taking my gun from me, that kind of shit. And then they're interacting very pleasantly with somebody that you would think that they would hate, right? Like purple here, uh, rainbow masks, all that kind of yeah, stuff. Right. And it was kind of surreal. So it see. seems, so it's, it's very, like, I guess, diverse, this group of people. Uh, yeah. Well, it's primarily people above the age of 30, like 35 mm -hmm. and above for the most yeah, part. That, yeah, that makes sense. There are some younger people, but the culture in their groups are very different. Like they behave more like your stereotypical China and they're a lot more open about sharing like child pornography and stuff like that. Like they don't try to hide their degeneracy, whereas the older groups tend to constantly try to reaffirm their normalcy. Okay. Yeah. I will say I, I did notice like in the documentary, they, they mentioned one guy like, first of all, they were all, like, way too open about their personal lives. I guess probably to reinforce that normalcy that you're talking about. No, they're like, just stupid. One... <laughs> oh, well, yeah, true. Yeah, <laughs> fair enough. But yeah, there's, like, one guy, he was retired military, I think. There's another guy talking about nuclear stuff. So, like, what, do you think it's, it has anything to... I guess it's not always to do with wealth, because I can't imagine Stacy was, like, the wealthiest person in that group no. so stacy's broke yeah stacy and yeah, she was I the figured. one responsible for funding a lot of this content um the guy who was ex-military he's probably ex-military now sure, <laughs> after yeah, this gets yeah. out yeah. yeah um i would not say wealth has much of a factor to do with it at all because most of these guys aren't rich they're mostly like middle mm -hmm. income and lower from what we can find uh a lot of the people that are very active in particular seem to fall into the very low income bracket. Uh, really? Yeah. Interesting. Uh, like Stacy, for example, um, some of the guys that just can't ever shut up also fall into that. There's somebody that we're looking at right now who is, <laughs> they talk so much, <laughs> so much. And um, yeah, they live in like relatively rural areas, uh, wooden houses, stuff like that. Okay. So, <laughs> not not really a thing so has this slowed down their content generation at all uh okay like, so there's or is i mean slowed down the demand i guess because content generation definitely has taken a hit because of arrests yeah but has this slowed down uh, their demand in any way demand will never go away so they're still they well they, they start becoming extremely agitated when their viewers get arrested and they become a lot more vulnerable because they start doing stupid shit a lot more often. Mm -hmm. Like you can find them on public profiles and stuff begging. And <sighs> there's stuff that we're working on right now that I can't talk about. But oh god, I want to see it so badly. <laughs> the stupidity of these people. Mm -hmm. Like they yeah. use Facebook to try to get into contact with new videos. 
and that obviously leads us right to them as well as the videos and stuff yeah um but no this is stuff like posting on their walls publicly or something yeah or, or they would like uh, yeah. go to like a marketplace that sells monkeys in indonesia and then start asking literally everyone in there if they want to make a torture video jeez yeah that's yeah um wow but yeah with regards huh. to the production production has slowed down by a significant amount because their viewers keep getting arrested these people by the way they also dox their own viewers whenever they're dissatisfied with them oh so, ah. yeah interesting if the VO charges like a little bit too much money, they're going to be like, God damn it, I hate you, you piece of shit. Uh, here's his complete information. And obviously, if you're running a community where you want more content, you don't want your VOs getting exposed because we will find them. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah, these people keep hurting themselves. They keep kicking themselves in the face constantly. And it's beautiful. Jeez. I'm like, yeah, this is... Wow, there's a lot to learn. Uh, yeah, I learned more I even, in the last yeah. two years than in the previous ten combined. Yeah, jeez. Um, uh, but yeah, there's actually one thing I wanted to point it out there. I don't know if you guys are mm -hmm. aware of a website called Kiwi Farms. Oh, yeah. 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 So Kiwi Farms has a uh, questionable reputation amongst, you know, polite yeah. society. Kiwi Farms was one of the most destructive forces against this community. I've worked with a number of these guys for about a year at this point. And they are, in some cases, single-handedly responsible for shutting down a number of their views. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's, I will say, Kiwi Farms has a knack for finding people like that. It's kind of crazy. It's us usually for bad reasons, but I, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, the guys that have been helping me are pretty, you know, they're pretty normal. They're pretty chill guys. They just, yeah. it's really fascinating to see people who can be, like, very, you know, People say they embody a lot of the negative traits on the internet and stuff like that. Like there's a guy called mm -hmm. Racism, quite literally. <laughs> and his like his name is like an N bomb, right? Like his little subtext. But every yeah. time he shows up, ah. he's just like relentlessly dunking on these people. And it is just mm -hmm. the funniest shit ever. Every because everybody Crazy. generally hates these people, more or less. Regardless yeah. of your political affiliation. That yeah. that is true. Yeah. I I I think generally speaking, pedophilia is and things of that nature are, are something that mm. everyone tends to hate across the political spectrum. So yeah. interesting. So um, I, I wanted to ask you, or so I think a lot of the document or the, the news uh, reporting has kind of told us about how um, these monkey hate groups, these monkey torture groups have gotten together, how they've connected. How did you find your way into like meeting these people on kiwi farms or meeting all these different people who are fighting against the monkey torture um a lot of phone calls that ended in hang-ups yeah uh it was not easy i spent months well first of all before i even made my first video i spent months trying to get in contact with like youtubers and stuff because i'm not a youtuber right you, if you saw like my early videos they were dumb they were just talking about movies uh yeah but nobody got back to me so after months of trying that i just did it myself. I got a video editor and tried to figure out how to use it and made videos. And then from then on, I started calling people like primatology associations. Uh, that actually went somewhere. I got into contact with Nina Jaquel and um, Sarah Kite from Action for Primates and Lady mm -hmm. Freethinker. They were a big help. I met Lucy. She ran a channel that YouTube has since terminated for cyberbullying and harassment. Because Yeah, I she explained that to me in an email. That's that strange but yeah yeah and it's basically true all of these people we just started building a network of contacts um i found mm -hmm. kiwi farms because they were the only guys that were chronicling and documenting zoo sadist activity on the internet and yeah. yeah i got i started talking to some of those guys and that's how we started like really working against the monkey groupers and stuff uh for clarification kiwi farms did not get involved until everything that you saw in that documentary had already been like done and dusted like they okay. got involved mm -hmm. last year and mm -hmm. like yeah. late last year gotcha so yeah but they've been like a big a huge help since then mm -hmm. and probably the major reason as to why the community got crippled so badly wow wow yeah. uh, so how often did your did these investigations kind of intersect with other animal torture trafficking rings like things outside of just macaques and non-human primates uh 
a couple of times, but I can't talk about those cases because they're still ongoing. Um, okay. There's a really big case in Australia right now, but Australian law, you can't, crimes of that nature, you can't really talk about it until mm -hmm. the guy has been convicted. It's considered prejudicial otherwise. But um, uh -huh. those were two really big zoo sadistic cases that were like basically happening at the exact same time. And um, yeah, I really want to talk about that because people are not going to believe they're not going to believe that shit is real. What that yeah. guy did and who he is and who and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I, 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 a lot of the, what we've spoken about today, I, it makes me very interested for a follow-up conversation a year or so after this, where maybe yeah. things have gone through courts and, you know, governments have gotten involved and they are, can be spoke about publicly again. Yeah. I do actually have two little follow-up questions pertaining to that. Uh, one, how, I, like, how much legal trouble would, are you in if you were one of the people in the groups watching the videos and, like, paying to watch the videos, but not, like, coordinating it? Because it seems like there weren't a whole lot of American arrests, but I don't know if that's true or not. Sorry, American what? Uh, it seems like there weren't a lot of arrests of, like, like, like Americans. American consumers. Like, it seemed like, how many, yeah. like, were they getting charged with something? Um... So yeah, I can't talk about that. That's okay. But uh, a number of people were arrested again over the following last weekend, and um, if you paid money for it, yeah, you getting dicked over. Like that is a crime. Mm -hmm. Even if you ah, didn't okay. pay money for Good it, you were still getting dicked over because distribution is also a crime. And ah. thankfully, the monkey molesters don't know that, so that's great. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. So you would see them in their groups constantly saying like, guys, 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 we're only in trouble if we like pay for it, right? But there's so much of it for free. It's like, yeah, you keep telling yourself that dipshit. <laughs> see how well that goes yeah. on for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but if you um, just like watch the video, I guess, like, I don't know if you guys know, but like technically watching child pornography isn't a crime. Watching zoo citizen, sadistic content isn't a crime. It's downloading, um, selling it, distributing it, sharing links for it, that that stuff will get you in trouble. Interesting. So is... They they mentioned Mr. Ape in the documentary yeah. quite a few times, but they say his, like, personal information is redacted. I'm I'm guessing that's also for legal reasons, like for an ongoing case? Um, no. He... Well, part of the terms and conditions... Well, Mr. Ape is my informant, more or less. But mm -hmm. part oh, of the okay. reasons for him acknowledging or, like, agreeing to do that interview was... His identity had to be kept secret. That's why TK and Stacy, their faces were shown. They oh. they were like fine. Well, Stacy didn't say fine, but she didn't complain about it either. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. So huh. that's. I mean, what do you guys think? What do you guys think of Miss Dave? Um, I initial impressions were that it seemed like. Most of the people who turned tail to become informants, maybe, were, like, into it for a while and maybe realized that the tide was turning against them and sort of tried to join the winning side. But I also don't necessarily know the psychology of these people. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say that was definitely the case with TK. Like, that was yeah. probably his biggest motivating factor because he had already been involved with uh, criminal stuff. He already had dealings with, like, law enforcement you know, coming for him and stuff like that. So I think he he knew that he, he was like being watched. Was yeah. Yeah. So we can't ask you our follow up question, which was, "Who's Mr. Ape?" <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, yeah. yeah, I'm not gonna. That's like, I'm okay. not gonna rat out yeah, an informant. Don't rat out on your informant. No, absolutely. Yeah, not. it's it's fair. I mean, I mean, if you're getting like actual cases thrown at people because yeah, of the informant, then this yeah, more power. Uh, but yeah, wow, this is this shit's heavy, man. A lot I hope of, you're talking. I hope you yeah. get to talk to somebody about this. Yeah, um, I mean, has yeah, have, has this taken a toll on you? Just like, because I know like Facebook moderators who have to moderate like child abuse content do take really hard hits to their psyche sometimes. How how's that been for you? I guess. Uh you're probably gonna think my answer is kind of weird, but my opinion of people actually went up following this stuff because. uh Mm -hmm. I, I'm not really a big people person, so mm -hmm. I kind of had a really cynical outlook on 
people in general. But once I got into this kind of stuff and I started meeting people who were working against it, and I saw like the BBC guys, for example, I always thought journalists kind of sucked, but like they were doing, like they were the reason this investigation got started to begin with, right? Because Nina and Sarah, like they approached like American media outlets to do this kind of stuff and they, they got nothing. But two of the journalists for the BBC, uh, they were in the documentary, Rebecca, who's the narrator, and Ajang, who interviewed OK Bro, they worked in Indonesia and they really pushed for like an investigation into this once the Lady Freethinker expose that came out like a year ago. Uh, I mean, two years ago, I think it was. Once that dropped, they started pushing for the investigation and they got the resources to really go all in. And I got to see them work and they were really like, this was something that their work is something that's important to them. And that was pretty refreshing. And um, yeah, my opinion of people was like elevated as a result of it. As sad as it might sound, right? Because I met like Lucy, I met uh, people who were you know, in psychology, criminology, the Kiwi Farms guys. Uh, people who like really, really hated this shit and just wanted to stomp these people into the dirt. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I guess um, another quick question. So you said not as much overlap with other Zeusatus communities as you might think. Um, do you think the fact that baby monkeys and monkeys in general look so close to humans, like sort of in an uncat in uncanny valley sort of way sometimes that this is why like do you think people viewed it as like the next best thing oh yeah no like that's not i don't really think that's a theory i think that's pretty much a fact because in their dms oh, they okay. just flat out admitted it like mm -hmm. so we don't really? we can't release okay. their chat logs obviously but yeah uh so there the groups are structured in different ways there are public groups if you can believe that with like two thousand members honeypots more or less and yeah. these people just they maintain a facade during those groups to a certain extent. They will say things like, oh my God, all these people calling us pedophiles, they're the real pedophiles. Like that is their number one rebuttal to being accused of being a pedophile. And it's usually like a really unhinged rant. Uh, I can actually send you a screen cap of like one I just took because I was on one of the groups again and I saw it. It's like their most common uh, talking point when it comes to trying to rebuke that accusation. But once they get into the private groups, which are much smaller, like 20 or 30 people and stuff like that, they're a lot more open about this kind of stuff. And that same person who was just saying that you need to think about kids instead of stupid tree rats. Yeah, they're outright explicitly stating that they got into this because of how much they like watching kids get hit. Like they just flat out said it. Um, yeah. You probably heard the Homeland Security guy mention the type of content that they yeah. watch is identical to the child pornography stuff. That's not, that's not an exaggeration. Like most of their videos are modeled after very extreme forms of child pornography called hurt call. So like the animals, like their limbs are bound in a manner to like really exaggerate their humanistic qualities, like spread eagled. Usually most of the time there's an excessive focus on genital trauma. So they love baby monkey dicks. I don't really know how else to put it. Like every single yeah. transaction log that we saw included some sort of genital manipulation of some sort. Um, the, the sodomy thing, like I mentioned before, the, uh, like they would pay OK Bro to jerk off a male monkey that he had called Judd and like drop candle wax. You saw part of that video in the, in the documentary, actually. Like when he's mm -hmm. tying a baby monkey to the top of the thing. Yeah. Like they, what they wanted him to do was to first jerk the baby monkey off and then start dripping candle wax on his junk. Jesus. Yeah. So they like outwardly deny that in public groups, but in their private groups, they're a lot more open about it. They just flat out state that, yeah, because baby monkeys, they don't react to pain and fear and trauma the way a puppy does. A baby mm -hmm. monkey is going to curl up and start sucking its thumb. Puppies don't do that. You know, they have... Their faces allow them to articulate expressions, not exactly in the way a human being could, but you can see their fear. You can see when a monkey has been psychologically broken and they just absolutely get off on that. Like the things that they say is exactly the kind of shit that you will see on child abuse channels on YouTube, like, um, like daddy of five and stuff like that. They constantly fixate on the idea of disciplining these animals.
Yeah. Yeah, I think that's something we may have talked about. It I we recorded so long ago I don't remember exactly, but the idea that like people were using the monkeys as stand-ins for children because they like to abuse children. I, I think we said that uh I don't remember when we said that, but yeah, no that Well, jeez. Uh, part of it is like I I also think some of these people don't actually know or understand what they are though. Like they see this content and it like awakens something in them, like something really primal in some cases, and they they, they don't understand it. They want to see more though, and they keep watching that kind of stuff. It's like the guy with the cats getting hot, cut off or whatever. Um, the difference between them and normal people though is like even if you get some sort of dopamine rush from seeing this, you're still aware that this is this is not exactly good, and you try to cut yourself off from it. But these people keep going and they keep trying to rationalize their behavior, which is where they get caught up. Um, like you guys ever heard of stuff like the techniques of neutralization? God damn lizard. They have like two of them living under my bed. Mm. And they do that shit constantly. But I like them because they eat bugs. So, um. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so, so like the techniques of neutralization. Yeah, it's like a psychological theory. Uh, mm -hmm. it's pretty old actually. Two psychologists, Sykes and Matza, came up with this idea where they were looking at do like delinquents who were like cutting class and stuff, and then looking at the theories, like how they rationalized it. And they realized that a lot of it applied to just people in general when they're violating social norms. So some of the things that people will use would be like, um, uh, they deny personal responsibility. Like they'll say that they were a victim of circumstance, they can't really help it. Or they will use techniques such as condemning the condemner, which is like ac accusing people of being a pedophile or telling them that if you can't talk about this unless you're a vegan, right? Because that means you support animal abuse. You can't condemn me. And uh, the two most common techniques used by these two guys are condemning the condemner and denial of victimhood. Denial of victimhood is probably the biggest one. Wherein they, they come up with these rationalizations that the reason they hate baby monkeys is because they're pests, because they're violent, because they attack mm -hmm. kids in other countries, they deal with farmers' crops, and they'll go on these huge rants where they're talking about if you had to live with these animals, you would hate them as much as we do. You would hate these disgusting goblins. But these dudes living in these suburbs in America, they don't know shit about monkeys. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, uh, like you call it like a, an ad hoc rationalization, something that occurs after the fact. After you get your big fat erection and you rub one out, then you try to figure out why you did it. And yeah, that's kind of what they go with. And it's not unique to them, by the way. Uh, mm -hmm. the zo dogs who say this and cats who say this, they do the exact same thing. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I can... This is all making a lot of sense <laughs> suddenly, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, I think, so we've been doing this for about an hour now. Um, I don't know, I think, I don't know if we have any other questions to ask you. Greg or Austin, do you have any? I don't have any further questions. Yeah, I think... Uh, just next up is, uh, I'm planning on talking to Lucy next, if, if, um, Dave, I believe you're also joining in, uh, for that discussion, and we'll sort of tack it on to the end of this one, um, or maybe make it separate if it's, like, its own thing for, like, an hour again, but, yeah, uh, I think this is a good place to wrap up for mm -hmm. this segment. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for coming on and explaining all of this to... Uh, not just us, but our audience as a whole. Um, yeah, because this is this is a lot of stuff that like isn't necessarily in the big BBC expose. Yeah, I, well, I was gonna say like the whole one of the big reasons why I started looking into this community is because I was I wanted answers to their behavior as well, and I think demystifying this kind of stuff is important. Mm -hmm. And zoo yeah. sadism in general is a topic that people get so freaked out by they just. It will clear an entire room out. Nobody wants to hear about that shit. But the yeah. unfortunate problem with that is because it's left alone, it just keeps festering and getting worse. And you can see that right now on social media. Like it's... Mm -hmm. This kind of stuff is like all over Twitter. It's all over Facebook. Facebook has groups with like hundreds of members sharing zoo sadistic videos, not just alone featuring monkeys. And unfortunately... It's also starting to become somewhat prevalent with children as well. Like that's one of the things that we kind of bump shoulders with that live streaming of child abuse is now an actual thing and not just a dot net yeah. rumor. Yeah. So yeah, like people 
need to really acknowledge this stuff or at least understand that it exists so that you can actually put pressure so that legislation can actually get passed because the people in the countries doing this kind of stuff you can't really get rid of them you can get rid of one guy another will take his place there needs to be more legislation to actually penalize the people that are funding the content in like the us mm -hmm. um the uk australia germany those kinds of countries so yeah. yeah like any opportunity we get to like be able to share that kind of stuff with people we'll take it for sure yeah well thank you so much and uh yeah we'll we'll wrap up here yeah you all should try yeah. to do something fun before you go to sleep though like uh eat caught <laughs> yeah or something. yeah let's uh yeah, I'm gonna go do something let's, uh, yeah i yeah, i've got uh 24 hours to fly all the way to india so i have uh, a lot of quiet time to myself to think about everything that <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah watch yeah, a maybe. lot of superhero <laughs> movies or something just yeah, the most disposable like, stuff yeah, you can yeah. um yeah but right. dave thank you so much for all your work yeah, thank um you so much. and keep yourself safe mm -hmm. out there thank you for thank you for talking to us today yeah, no problem, yeah. dude. So, yeah, mm -hmm. whenever you guys speak to Lucy, if you want me around, just message me and I'll get back again. Sweet. All right. All right. Thanks so much. Sounds good. All Thank right, you. dude. Take care. Bye. See ya. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Welcome, everyone. This is the second interview uh, portion of episode 40. So, we have with us now Lucy, uh, joined by Yardfish Dave, who was with us for the first portion of this. And, yeah, you were also one of the people that helped... Uh, you know, sort of blow this whole thing wide open, right? So we wanted to hear from you as well. And uh, here's a good question we can start with. Um, it's, it's the same question we asked Dave. How would you describe, like, the series of videos that led to you being put down this algorithm path that sort of led you to the monkey hate videos? Like, they all started out as pretty innocuous, right? Well, you know, they, they started out at, like, I was watching... Um the chimpanzees and the gorillas from the zoo in japan mm -hmm. and it was just from watching that then all of a sudden you know i was seeing um pet monkey channels mm -hmm. in my feed and at first i wasn't you know clicking on them but i kept seeing one in particular that was like an exposed it was on blast they were exposing the what is it mona donna yeah, Sakura's monkey. So I watched that one and that was like an eye opener. But then, you know, just from watching that one, that like my feed was just filled with pet monkeys. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, it didn't take long for that, you know, to happen. So Yeah. So would you say it's like definitely like sort of a pipeline from like these videos of pet monkeys like looking cute in clothes and in people's houses to Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Okay. It's definitely more than just a pipeline, though, because the guys who fully started filming the viewers were literally YouTubers. Yeah, that is true. Right. You, you did mention that. Yes, they true. went yeah. from like, yeah, like yeah. Okay Bro was a YouTuber. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Mas Pachette was a YouTuber. Uh, I'm not sure Asep was a YouTuber, but um, I think the guy that put them in contact with him was a YouTuber. Mm, yeah, yeah, I believe it. Yes. Yeah, and so. Uh, would you say it's all like mostly like obviously the common factor here is that all these videos are being filmed usually in countries where there is like a native population of primates but would you say it also has something to do with like the local uh animal cruelty laws because i i've seen like a a similar pet monkey channel where it doesn't seem to be like overly cruel at first glance but still very weird and like i checked the linkedin of the guy and it was based out of like vietnam like i don't know how like what how would you describe the link between like animal welfare laws and the content that these videos start to create over time i mean i would say that i mean yeah is a big motivating factor because they know they're not really gonna get heavy criminal charges but a lot of people would kind of say things like um you know the monkeys are pests in these countries yeah. and stuff right uh dude like the most common pest the animal that they consider to be pests the most are like dogs because dogs mm -hmm. are everywhere you only run into monkeys in very specific areas and uh the people that get caught doing this like they're not it's not something that's specifically just going to be ignored by the locals you know it's it's going to give you a bad reputation yeah. if they get caught so like they film with masks for a reason not just because they're scared people report them but it will ruin their reputation where they come mm -hmm. from okay yeah oh yeah here's speaking of youtubers uh lucy you have a youtube channel two youtube channels actually that were recently suspended for cyberbullying, i believe 
Well, the first one was um, taken off for, I guess, cyberbullying. Yeah, allegedly yeah. cyberbullying. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, what can I say about that? It's just like... Just, yeah. I know the cat. Yeah, the cat. And this is what's going to happen. <laughs> That's all right. You know, I'm sorry. You're all right. Stops. Anyway, oh no, he um, had like a cat that was just like all over last time, just doing yeah. cat things. Yeah, this is like she's just mean. So, but anyway, um, the cyberbullying was, you know, those monkey haters. They just once a video of mine, you know, was released, uploaded, then because they were subscribed to my channel, mm. um, they would all get to. One would say, okay, there's another video, and they would do like a mass report. Uh -huh. So. And, you know, of course, it was for cyberbullying. So, would you say that, were they coordinating this in the same, like, Telegram group chats that yeah. they were, like, mm -hmm. sending these videos? Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah they would hit, like, pretty much any channel that uh, talked about monkey stuff. And it wasn't just them, though. It was, like, YouTube would also uh, deal, well, no, I wouldn't say specifically D-list, but you'd get hit if you made a video about monkey stuff uh like uh, there was a, a bigger youtuber who made a video about the monkey hate stuff a couple months ago and it was doing really well took off and then after a couple hours you just see the views just spike downwards after the video got blacklisted it got age restricted it got hit with a whole bunch of different really? stuff and one of the interesting things too is the bbc documentary that was released that was age restricted before it even aired like they once they uploaded it before it actually premiered it got age restricted. For clarification, the YouTube hasn't had a BBC documentary age restricted in a long really? time. Like two weeks prior to that, they released a video, uh, a similar investigation into these dudes that were molesting school girls on a on a train in Japan, and they would sell the videos on social right. media. Yeah. Dark stuff, right? No age restriction. Human trafficking, uh, selling kids, uh, really horrific sexual abuse stuff. No age restriction. But the video that implicates YouTube and this kind of stuff gets age restricted. Really? Just something to consider. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. And, uh, yeah, I guess that leads me into my, one of my other questions is, what measures do you two think that YouTube should be taking to prevent content like this from being generated? Or do you think, do you think there's any degree of, like, complicity in this? Or is it just, uh, mismanagement or incompetence? I, I would probably say more they don't want to spend money yeah <laughs> more okay. than anything else more than malice per se well actually well, let me put it like this right youtube uh lucy's last channel got terminated uh for basically a uh, ban evading right because they banned her previous account but the only way they would have seen her account was if they paused the documentary because it was they, they had a sequence where her new account was on screen for one second that was the only time it was mentioned. So they would have had to have paused that video, take a note of a channel, because a weird ass channel name, yeah. and then manually strike it. <laughs> it happened hours after the documentary yeah, came out. She got uh, banned. It's crazy, yeah. <laughs> so do you, yeah, like I'm just, like obviously this is just speculating, but it's like worrying to think about, like obviously, like the algorithm is partly to blame here, and to fix that would be a lot of effort that's and it's a lot easier to just like sort of suppress uh blame coming at them i would assume so uh, i'm i assume it's yeah. also just due to like it's a lot harder to manually moderate stuff but then again in this case it does sound like they did do that manually so very very strange well i know that there was another there was a video um that i can't remember the name of it but they used a thumbnail from the video that shows like what I did was I replaced the face of a guy and I put it like a killer clown mm -hmm. face on him. And it was that part of the video was, it was making a point about, you know, um, yeah, get a YouTube channel and a monkey and then you can make money type thing, you know? Yeah. So I used that ev the evil clown head, you know, as, you know, like kind of a representative, it's kind of evil to, you know, do that. So, but they took that. I think this is what they did is they, they're the ones that used that thumbnail. They, you know, or however that happened. And they saw that and they automatically assumed that I was doing some uh, scam, you know, mm. uh, because it was actually 
um, I got this off of Google. It was like these, some guy um, talking about YouTube and you can make money and blah, blah, blah. So they took that as it, that I was scamming people. Really? With just, because, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. And Dave, I'll have to I don't to think they were using that you. as an excuse. Yeah, it, huh? Yeah. I think they was just using that as an excuse. Well, yes, of course. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I do yeah. agree with that. Yeah. yeah. But, but you know, like, well, it that's is... the solutions on YouTube. It's not just about monkeys, though. It's like animal channels on a whole. It's just like stupidly exploitative. You don't have to go looking very long to see right. like, oh, no, this poor cat. I found them stuck in an impossible situation buried under a fire truck yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Uh, then you film yourself getting it out. It's like the animal content has just become feels like it's easier to find exploitative content than it is to find Exactly. legitimate content like there are no legitimate monkey channels on youtube they're all owned by people that are exploiting them like lady freethinker she did a piece where like people uh one of her people went to these uh these monkey channels to the actual homes and stuff and these animals off camera are shoved into mm. cages right like what you see is a set yeah. like that's an actual set and they're only fed when the cameras are rolling and right. then they're put back into these cages and then they're dumped once they hit like six to seven months. Yeah. So it's like demonetization of monkey pet channels is probably one of the first and easiest things that okay. they can do. Yeah. Because like most of the channels are Cambodian, like I told you last time, and it's illegal to own a monkey in Cambodia. Not in Indonesia though, but in Cambodia it is. And Vietnam it is too as well. Mm. Yeah, really especially like some of the monkeys that they use, like the stump tails and stuff, yeah. uh, like they're in peril. Yeah. Yes. And those are the most popular. Mm. Yeah. Oh, Lucy actually, remember... So while we were like doing the documentary, Lucy actually found a channel that had a baby orangutan. Yeah. Really? And these freaks were in the comments offering, you know, money to torture and yes, molest that baby, baby orangutan. orangutan. Yeah, that's crazy. That was awful. It was rescued. Yeah. yeah, like she reported it into like a wildlife service stuff. Yeah, and yeah it was rescued. Well, that's good. Yeah. But, I mean, the whole fact is, like, they like to say that it's just baby monkeys and stuff, but no, they have a thing for orangutans and baboons mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. yeah. I've, do you think the endanger, like, the endangered status of the monkeys has anything to do with it? Like, does that play into the sadism a bit? No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, genitalia does, though. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's why they like stump tails that much. Ah, okay. So, you th so, demonetization is a good first step for, like, basically, like, pet monkey channels. Do you think the moderation system of YouTube could be, like, in any way improved to, like, take down these videos more? Or, like, ha like it, I assume that it's very inefficient because most of these channels are, like, still active in some way, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why do you think it is that, like, they're not really taking action against it, seemingly not even as readily as they are against, like, your channel, Lucy? Um... Well, as far as like the mo like moderators, I think it's more of like a, the machine that's doing that. You know, yeah, you know, I'd, I'd assume it's like automated. Yeah. So, I mean, you get that automated message when you want to appeal like mm -hmm. a video that's been taken down or your channel. And it's always the same thing, always the same reply. You know what I mean? Everybody gets that same yeah. reply. It's yeah. Really it's like, so, I feel like calling it a moderation system is kind of like, a joke to be it honest is. because it's like it's completely busted yeah it's uh because like if i would they, they have like so this wasn't in the bbc documentary because it's like pretty terrible stuff mm -hmm. but like the sexual exploitation of animals is a thing on youtube like if i were to tell you you should bleep the name of this channel out by the way don't want people going there if i tell you to type in and then sort by most popular just look at what you'll find yeah it is yeah. It is some disgusting shit. How that even is allowed? Because mm -hmm. it's a guy who's literally jerking off a baby monkey in multiple videos and using it as the thumbnail. And if that wasn't bad enough, he circles Circle, his like, yeah. monkey's junk <laughs> with a red yeah. dot Jeez. so that you know what he's doing. And that's still on YouTube. Mm -hmm. That channel has been up for like two years, I think, at this point. Oh, right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I was like, how, how, how did I get past anything? Yeah, moderation it, sucks balls. <laughs> Something yeah. I've noticed is that, like, it seems like maybe the people doing the heinous stuff yeah. are a bit better at um, manipulating the moderation system for, to their benefit than we are at, like, getting their videos taken down. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Because they can just, like, buy a new channel, which is what they do usually. Mm. Um, 
the Cambodian guys like they if you look at the old videos themselves on the on a channel you'll see that they usually have nothing to do with what they you right. know making right now oh, okay. that's because they bought the channel yeah they bought the channel from somebody else who monetized it and then they sell it on Facebook so okay. it's easy for them but, to circumvent yeah. the moderation team in that way they already buy it that I mean with subscribers and uh, yeah that AdSense already like it's already been approved to be monetized oh okay so the, it's like guaranteed engagement more or less and like they've discovered youtube shorts recently mm. so yeah. they put a lot of stuff on that yeah yeah and i imagine that's bad too because the youtube shorts are being pushed pretty heavy by uh mm -hmm. like the youtube marketing mm -hmm. and you're going to get a lot of stuff suggested to you and plus it like once you're done with the video just automatically continues once you swipe up Right. so i can imagine yeah. that gets out of hand pretty quickly yeah it yeah. does like i mean uh just i think it was last week there was this video of a guy quote unquote rescuing a baby monkey that was tangled in a fishnet that was on dry <laughs> land in the middle of a warehouse <laughs> yeah. and he's sitting there and he's like oh my god oh my god how you get right. tangled up like dude come on yeah you know how we got tangled up in there yeah it does it does seem to like in multiple cases start out with presenting like the helplessness of these baby monkeys and then getting more sadistic with it uh after people are like drawn in because like rescuing an animal is seen as like a cute and good act right but for the people who are more interested in the helplessness aspect of it they're also getting that out it's the viewers yeah. that just um are addicted to that you know they want to see yeah. like this you know situation and have a happy ending you know yeah. it's and it's not yeah. it's not like that but i mean common sense tells you that you know you see a monkey like caught in it like a you know what dave just described or in any situation and to be rescued is not likely like it's always you know there's somewhere where there's no other member of their troop anywhere in sight yeah you know what i mean and we already know that these babies they're glued to their mothers for from the time they're born until what a year old or whatever and you know it's yeah. like why is this monkey like all alone in you know an area where there is zero monkeys yeah like on a construction site and stuff right. like you seriously or expect people to believe that the yeah you know, it's like oh, yeah so it's it's there because like it kind of is amazing how easily people seem to fall for like a lot of these things to begin yeah. with it's just like yeah <laughs> it's so obviously contrived though right like, yeah exactly and there's so how? i mean because they're, they're not all monkey groupers that are watching this stuff it's people who actually believe that the animals are being rescued yeah and you would see them like they send money to these youtubers yes. in order to like take care of care of them mm -hmm. and they use only a fraction of that money to buy like food because the conversion rate is so insane and then they buy a car with the rest yeah like right. okay really? for example <laughs> so house. would you yeah. <laughs> yeah would you say there's like a some trickery involved here where like they present in some cases like good animal welfare and then behind the scenes they're just torturing these oh people? oh absolutely yeah i mean yeah lucy could tell you all about like the um the cambodian dudes who film at angkor wat that present themselves yeah. as like ngos and stuff oh, oh right. yeah. yeah i yeah. do remember you mentioned that yes i mean they're all you know they all manipulate the viewers and they all you know and it's i the thing that i don't understand is like you know the common sense part that um when if you're new to see watching these monkeys then okay maybe the first time you might not you know see it but when you start seeing a pattern like it keeps happening like for instance um all of a sudden all these pet monkeys are becoming sick and have to go to the doctor hospital which yeah. they're going to some like pet shop you know that treats you know that has a vet in the back that treats dogs and cats you know what i mean <laughs> yo vet i mean go figure and so i you know it's like when you see one monkey go through that and then you see another and then another and another it's just like that should be like red flag after red flag like hello yeah, yeah. you know there's something up with this and besides that it's like why are these people like diagnosing or whatever they're doing to these infant monkeys and giving them whatever they're giving them you know what i mean it's yeah. like what are they giving them yeah like videos of in baby monkeys getting injections and yes. stuff are really popular yeah and so are videos of kids getting injections like if you just type in kids getting injections or kids being hurt on youtube you're gonna find unless they took them down recently you're gonna find entire compilations oh, of that, that kind hurt of stuff. For the, 
of those hardcore yeah. videos. Yeah. 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 I think there's probably some that are still up. I think. I mean. Yeah, I didn't check recently because I don't really want to end up on a list or anything. Yeah. Like, so, yeah. Right. Yeah, Dave, you did mention the link between that thing and like actual like exploitation of children mm -hmm. in our last talk, but um, yeah, I guess so. You would say that, or I guess would you say that like the majority, or at least a decent amount of these monkey torture content uh, creators are trying to play both sides of the coin here, where they maybe publicly present you know, seemingly oh, yeah, sure. innocent things, and then mm -hmm. they use that to draw people into the darker stuff that is, like, more... Right. Okay. Yeah, because, like, I was gonna say, so, like, Lucy's been, like, documenting this one woman who has, like, 25 channels or something like that. Yeah, or more, uh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And she basically, like, rotates through monkeys and stuff, and... <laughs> I'm not even sure if I could say she tries to present herself as a nice person. I guess she kind of does, mm -hmm. but like she's trying to play like a wide audience. Like she she constantly does like scat videos. Would you be? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, um, total exploitation of their genitals. I mean, in a very obscene way. And yeah. that would be yeah, like and it's scat, on YouTube. Scat. Like she uses it as thumbnails and stuff like that. Yes. And um. But she's also trying to cater to the people who want to see, like, a baby get pampered as well, which is what she does on camera in some of her videos. And then the people who like to see them get hurt. It's like, they, they know they have to juggle demographics if they want to make the biggest impact possible. Because mm -hmm. some of these channels have, like, 750,000, right? And um, the video I'm specifically working on right now, which I didn't get a chance to do because some shit always keeps coming up, right. is specifically... <laughs> on a guy who by day he runs like five channels on youtube right and by day he presents himself as the most loving kindest guy imaginable I, if i saw his videos i would be convinced that he's legit you know he he really really takes seems to take really good care of these baby monkeys they're not as afraid of him but once they get to around five months old he tortures them and kills them on camera and then sells the videos on telegram wow and replaces them with two new monkeys of the exact same name. That's crazy. Yeah, no, I... Yeah, that's true, though. Jeez. So, would you say that... Uh, Dave, you mentioned last time that many of these people are not the smartest criminals. Yeah. <laughs> would you say that there's a, a definite <laughs> pattern that seems to work very well for, like, identifying these people, like, immediately, or at least upon closer inspection? Yeah, insult them. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm not joking by the way yeah. like i found so many of these people just by insulting them in my videos like just calling them kitty diddler or weirdo oh, they hate that. um they hate that they will yeah. go off on this unhinged rant in the comments and that literally led to a bunch of them getting arrested because i oh, <laughs> figured out who they were <laughs> and like the bbc actually recorded like ride-alongs on the raids for some of these guys that got arrested and it sucks that they couldn't air it because like uk oh, laws and stuff like yeah yeah like they can't really show their faces and stuff but it was like because they was talking so much shit in the comments right they, they was like you cannot stop us yeah, yeah the fish we exactly, kill million yeah. baby pity infinite no, and yeah. you can't save them it's like okay but you just open your door and let me walk right in there right. so yeah thanks exactly. and i'm not joking uh kiwi farms for example does that constantly they insult them and then they become obsessed with them and then they fish them out <laughs> It's uh, it's great. Pretty funny to look at. Oh, it is. Really, yeah. So even yeah. with the more innocuous, like if they, if you wanted to figure someone out by like their more innocuous side of the videos, like the people who are creating the monkey torture content, like if you just found a vid, a channel that they run where they're being nice to the monkeys, but they have another channel yeah. where they're like torturing the monkeys. How would you? How do you draw the link between those two channels? Usually, like, how do you figure that out? Um, what you usually just monkey molesters are stupid. They don't understand self-preservation, so they will release a video to share it. Because in these communities, the more content you can share, the more clout you have, right? And when they release videos, that allows us to identify who's making the videos. Uh -huh. So that's how we usually do it. It's like most of the people making the the YouTube videos and stuff like that, they're not specifically making snuff content but they are abusing them so uh, okay. yeah so when it comes to that sense it's kind of safe to assume that most of them are abusing these monkeys because 
that's the easiest thing for them to do because these monkeys require like constant attention okay they're like toddlers basically and most of them you could see that they're clearly undernourished like they're malnourished right. and stuff like that they're much smaller than they would be normally mm -hmm. so is it safe to assume that like most channels you see that post hundreds of videos of like baby monkeys like in unnatural situations like with clothes like would would you say that that's probably a good indicator that this person is doing something weird are you saying like when you see videos of monkeys like with wearing clothes and diapers and well yeah i because there, there's like a very specific kind of channel where it's just like it seems like all the videos are on like a set and nothing mm -hmm. outwardly bad is happening but it's these monkeys in an unnatural like right. location and doing are being weird stuff forced to behave against their own natural instincts yeah and... so would you say yeah. that's like pretty much always an indicator that they're doing something behind? Well, okay. I mean, anytime I see a channel that has a baby monkey that's wearing a diaper, I mean, yes. It, okay. I mean, it, <laughs> if it's only wearing a diaper, you're absolutely being fed with a bottle. Yeah, because it's like, that's not, that is not normal. Yeah. That is not normal. And then besides that, it's just like the number one that they're just exploiting it anyway so for profit yeah that is true <laughs> yeah a really profit. good way to tell too is to look at the previous videos that they made and look to see the older monkeys what happens to them they right. usually disappear exactly. if you Good see point. that Absolutely. then yeah they switched out yeah so um that's one of the things that they do that's not to say that the ones that keep them around are any better because yeah. there's this one guy who has like a huge youtube channel and he has all of the older monkeys still there but he sexually abuses them. He, he there was like he uploaded those videos of him doing that he himself, oh, I know, yeah, I know like exactly seven like years that. ago. Yeah, that's crazy. On YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, and like he's a massive channel, and a lot of people think that he's actually like one of the few people that is good to these animals. Nah, dog. No, I don't think like, it's weird. I've had people telling me for like a while that he also like once they're off camera, they they go into a cage immediately. Um, you know, they're, they're defanged and stuff like that. And it's, uh, if I were to make a video on him, I'd get nuked off of orbit because he has almost a million subs. Right, so exactly, I can't. yes. So yeah. we're trying to deal with him legally, but he has political connections in Malaysia. So wow. it's like tricky. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. So they could theoretically just like sick their subscribers on you to like mass report you and get you taken down. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They have done it before because I got the videos from somebody who re-uploaded them. Mm. and onto youtube i uh, granted they probably shouldn't have done it that way because that's definitely right. violating youtube guidelines Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> but i mean that's where we got it from and it's like his face his voice his oh, hands yeah. his monkey's balls all of that yeah. yeah and the cat he did the cat too oh uh, yeah the cat too he also he didn't limit himself to monkeys by the way he's an right. equal opportunity degenerate oh, so cats himself. monkeys and uh who knows what else yeah yeah so, um, two more questions, but I'm going to lead with one first, because that could inform my second question. Uh, what do you think that our viewers, like, ever, average everyday people who don't necessarily, like, spend a lot of time, like, trying to track these people down, what do you think they can do to help fight against this trend? Or not trend, but this, uh, little cult, I guess you would call it. <laughs> hmm. Well, there's, I it's mean... Kind of people who realize what's going on i mean for one i guess it would be to stop watching those that channels is true. yeah <laughs> that would be a you know a start right there because you know it, even just commenting on their channel watching their channel that gives them you know like the views, engagement yeah mm. the comments i mean it, so the thing is is just to don't subscribe to them don't watch them okay. don't even leave comments yeah. Well, I would also say too, like, just That's the fair. fact that more people can know about this kind of stuff mm -hmm. also can increase the pressure being placed on social media yeah. to up their moderation stuff because this these people have been around since like 2015. Yeah. And they were ignored for so long and they just kept ex escalating until they got to this point. Yeah, I didn't even so, know that it existed in 2015. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I was like, that's when the earliest videos really started showing up. And uh, yeah, they were completely ignored. People just kind of swept them under the rug, and they were they weren't trying to hide. Like they were right there in the comments, being really brazen. Yeah. And uh, YouTube ignored it for so long, even though like people were sending them the links telling you this guy is openly selling snuff on your platform. Right. And they didn't do shit. 
and uh yeah it was only until like nina did that lawsuit with youtube like for facilitating distribution of crush videos like right. i'm not 100 percent sure the details but like the judge they assumed the judge was going to throw it out immediately but he didn't mm -hmm. like he tell he told them to do something about it like to rephrase it or something reframe right. it and it was after they did that they went on a mass exodus and they purged a lot of monkey torture channels and lucy's channel was also <laughs> caught in that Nah. <laughs> yeah, she got nuked during that purge. Oh, hell yeah. But um, that's, that's the thing that they knew the channels were there. They knew where all of them were. They got rid of them in like a couple of days. Yeah. And uh, something similar happened with Elsa Gate, right? Because when the Elsa Gate stuff happened, like those channels got nuked as soon as they got like mainstream attention. Mm. And if you went through the vid, like the internet in the year following that kind of stuff, you would know that was a thing because they're all gone. Like all of them just wiped out completely yeah uh so yeah youtube knows it's just they don't really give a shit unless they're pressured yeah that's the problem so do you, do you think it's because like they're getting ad money from it that it's just like they don't really feel particularly pressured to take them down maybe or yeah yeah but i don't think it's like a ton of ad revenue though yeah. because it's not like these channels are massive with like 10 million so okay, okay one or seven million well there's subs. a few of them that are which is like some yeah. of them are like a little questionable because you know they can buy that um there's a program where it's like an uh a generator a view generator and then yeah like, like subscribers a service more like yeah. a thing it's, yeah, it's a service another program so to speak right yeah but yeah i think some of those channels like the one she's talking about is like they bought it to hell like um animals home and stuff like yeah. that has like seven million subs and like millions of views and it's either the kids that are watching it, it because is. it it's does try to be. jack the yeah like it does try to jack the youtube kids algorithm with like you know really yeah. bright happy music well, and yeah, bright if colors you go to the kids though if you go to their you know area and then you type in pet monkeys you'll see that those videos yeah yeah so like some of them definitely do target that demographic yeah. and that's really creepy that is, that's that is yeah. big right there that is yeah big. and if i the kids watching that then i mean it's so. it's also definitely like doubly bad because i mean I, the same thing with the elsa gate uh kids just tend to let videos autoplay and just watch whatever comes on yeah right and so pretty much anything can get exposure and revenue and engagement that way Yep. Yeah. The interesting thing too about the Elsa Gate is like the Elsa Gate stuff had like a lot of like weird scat stuff in it with like yeah. poop and so on. And this community is just filled to the brim with that. Oh, and that absolutely. Animals Home, the channel, it like constantly has to, in its thumbnail a bit a uh, picture of a monkey sitting on a toilet. Yes. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. See, I did yeah. notice yeah. that. I because yeah. like what I was thinking of is like completely outside of this before this article even dropped and I reached out to you guys I like found this really weird channel that had like dozens of videos of this monkey on the toilet and I was it was a very <laughs> unnatural thing and like all the yeah. thumbnails looked the same and I was like does anyone know what the deal with this is and yeah I guess I have my answer now I did a yeah. Christmas video with those monkeys. Uh, <laughs> saying you know like oh yeah your monkey will come you know potty train you know there's a monkey sitting on the toilet you'll get a <laughs> yeah supply of like, toilet paper and you know it'll do your laundry for you and you know because washing yeah clean, it's like they hold stuff. their hands and make them do like weird chores and yeah, stuff like you know, that it's and like, it's really weird there's the stuff that makes them seem like kids right yeah because they like have like you can hear kids laughing over yeah, the videos and stuff like that are really weird stuff. creepy <laughs> it's like a play like kitchen you know, with the little miniature food, they yeah. go to the grocery store, and they go in their, like, electric car, like, you know, the remote control car, or whatever. I hate that goddamn just... car. It looks so stupid. <laughs> it is stupid. But it yeah, they usually have, the like, a lot of little message. ducks following them around as well. I don't right. get that. I guess children yeah. like ducks. Well, one of my roommates yeah. showed me a video, shared a video with me, of one of those monkeys that was on the back of a goat. And they're like, isn't this cute? And I was like, no this is not cute and they didn't yeah. understand what was you know like what's wrong with it but i had yeah. to like, tell them this is like that is a it. problem do a lot of people yes. see like these cute videos and they're like ah that's adorable i want one of those yeah. like yeah they probably like um stick out that animal in a cage afterwards though yeah so yeah i guess you would say just like general awareness and like making people aware of this so that the pressure gets put on them 
uh, legally mm-hmm. and financially is definitely probably like the most important thing that like the average person could do, right? Yeah, but not just for the monkey stuff though, like the animal stuff in general mm-hmm. on YouTube, like it's bad. It's really bad. Like the monkey stuff is at the worst because they kind of use, they serve as a proxy for like a lot of different weird fetishes and stuff because yep. they are very human-like nature. But like, that's why they're so popular, but the animal stuff is just pretty bad on YouTube mm-hmm. in general. And that's really something that they need to be pushed into actually doing something about. Yeah. They're not going to do it just like that. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So a lot of, I mean, they were supposed to do something about like all these like animal rescues and it's still, you know, it's still a problem. Yeah. Because I mean, the, the other point to that is if they don't do something about it, then legislators are going to make them do something about it. And that will usually end up crippling like it will be really harsh for everybody and i don't think anybody wants that we just right. want you to regulate your platform the way you said it's supposed to be done yeah yeah so yeah initially i was going to ask if there's any monkey torturers who you feel are infamous enough and that you would like want to bring to justice almost but i feel like that's probably better to like ignore and handle legally right or yeah yeah i mean if there's somebody that's not famous, we're not going to talk about him. Like, I don't yeah. want to know who he is. Yeah. We're going to talk about him after he's dealt with, not before. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I guess as an alternative to that, what would you say is like a... Are there are there any other happy stories that came out of this? Like any, any rescues that you want to talk about? Or is it mostly depressing? <laughs> they rescued the orangutan. That is okay. Yes, they did rescue them. Um, Lucy got a cat, was awesome. which was probably going to die. <laughs> yeah, got age, it. I got that video was age restricted when I posted that video about the orangutan. <laughs> That's mm. funny. Oh yeah, of yeah. course, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, but the people asking you to ask the guy to molest that they they were just fine. Yeah, um, exactly. Right, exactly. But as for happy stories, though, yeah, <laughs> I, it's a yeah. tall yeah, ask really for a good. subject like this. But you know, yeah, just in case yeah. there's something. It's just the whole... Usually, once a YouTuber gets their hands on one of them, they're probably gonna die. Dang. Yeah. Um, if not die, then they get abandoned and like live in ass conditions. Mm. From then, probably die. Damn. <laughs> the majority well, of them, I think, die. Well. <laughs> so no happy note to end on turns Not out really. humanity There's still really no happy, still sucks you know. a little bit but you mentioned last time that this has actually improved your opinion of humanity dave because of all the people that came together to help shut this thing down like completely of yeah. their own free will uh on their own from a time. lot of different backgrounds yeah so yeah i guess that can be our happy note is that at the end of the day, there's more people willing to try to shut this down than there are people Absolutely. who want to keep yeah. this going. Oh, yeah. I mean, most of these dudes, despite their, like, bravado online and stuff, once they get confronted in real life, they all of the bluster just disappears. Their balls just drop off. And they're, like, um, they're not shouting Karen or they're not saying, no, you're the pedophile, not us, which is, like, their favorite right. tactic. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They they don't say any of that shit. They just they just get real quiet and they be like, I was I was hacked though. That was my that was my brother's phone or, or dumb shit like that. Yeah. And then they eventually cave because it always ends one way for them. They know what they are. Right. And I was I was kind of I actually thought that they believed a lot of the shit that they said online. Mm-hmm. But like after seeing how they behaved when they got confronted, it's like okay, right. so they don't believe any of it at all. It's just bullshit. Right. They just yeah. tell themselves that. Exactly. Yeah. 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 They know that they're doing something wrong. They know it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's sort of like to catch a predator. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. Sure. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm I'm really grateful you guys came on to talk to our audience and share this and. Wow, you know, your I'm, cat I'm... is really obscene. <laughs> just is she? licking away in the back. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, you're all right. <laughs> but yeah um thank you for all the work you guys are doing and you know continuing to do this stuff absolutely um yeah. including coming on here. here unfortunately it doesn't right yeah. yeah i think we have like more work now <laughs> than the last couple of months so it's like yeah because we don't get paid for this shit no. yeah i was gonna say <laughs> yeah which, yeah that's another funny thing a lot of these people you know like the that whole monkey hate community thinks that we're getting paid you know i wish and it's like it ain't <laughs> i like can that. buy food yeah 
because like my youtube channel hasn't even managed to like because all my videos get demonetized obviously and i demonetize them myself in most cases but it's like uh, you need to get a hundred dollars on youtube to get a payout to begin with and yeah i'm like i'm at like 91 dollars after two and a half years oh my gosh. so yeah imagine the uh one pizza i could buy with it <laughs> exactly. exactly yeah <laughs> oh my yeah but you know it's like they're not gonna i well i don't want to be my channel is not going to be monetized i mean and strictly because i'm not going to profit off the misery of these poor animals but yeah. you know i also use the word fuck too many times you know in my video <laughs> yeah. they yeah. just you know, they ain't yeah fine. like if people think i insult them a lot and like yeah yeah if she <laughs> She takes a dunk on them like constantly it's, as well. Yeah, well. It's easy to do. To, I mean, how can you not? Yeah, it's funny. It's funny. <laughs> There's a bit of a freedom I feel in not having like... to like conform to the YouTube guidelines, because like we we don't we aren't monetized on YouTube. We probably won't be. So we we usually just like, oh, you guys could consider making a Patreon. That's what we do. <laughs> it's it's just where people like voluntarily. Oh, yeah. Like I I do have a Patreon. Oh, I do. Really? I do as well, but oh, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll put those the in the episode description. I... Oh, well, yeah, we have like nine patrons or some shit, well, yeah, so I'll it's not like, like, like a big deal. Okay. I'll, I'll oh, make sure shit. to plug those so people give you money. <laughs> well, big part of that is because your channel keeps getting blown up and I people know, don't even right? know you're still around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But so, I also don't really go on there. I, I can't, it's hard for me to upload the videos because they, my videos are too large. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. then I don't want to go back and like have to edit and like cut in half or you know yeah. shorten. That's just too much. Like, so I don't know. Um, but yeah. All right. Well, yeah. I think yeah. that about wraps things up. Thank you again for both of you coming on and answering my questions. Uh, Thank you, Austin. Yeah.